Today we'll take a quick look into the doer, Henry David Thoreau. This is Henry David Thoreau, part of the transcendentalist movement of the American Romantic Literary Movement. He was born in 1817 and died in 1862. But why is Thoreau different from the others? Perhaps some of his own writing can tell us. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. From Walden by Henry David Thoreau. So Henry David Thoreau, the great author and writer that we know, was actually dismissed as an idler, a drifter, and a minor writer and wasted Harvard graduate, almost forgotten in his day. And yet in our present day, he's one of the few writers who deserve the appellation of a great writer. Thoreau put into practice principles of plain living and high thinking, where we have his friend Emerson bringing up the ideas and the notions of transcendentalism, Henry David Thoreau actually tried to live them. Now his journal of Walden of nearly 7,000 pages that are transcribing his daily thoughts, observations, readings, and encounters with the nature around him and with the men who question what he's doing. Now, what is his relation with Ralph Waldo Emerson? First of all, Thoreau is 14 years younger than him. He's almost like a pupil or a student rather than a friend. But their friendship bloomed in the late 1830s after Thoreau's graduation from Harvard. Now, throughout the 1840s, Emerson encourages Thoreau as a writer, particularly praising his poetry and getting him started on the topic of nature. Now, along with Emerson, Thoreau shares political attitudes about slavery and wanting to abolish it in the United States. But their friendship cooled a little bit in the 1850s, with Thoreau resenting Emerson's patronage and Emerson critical of what he saw as Thoreau's lack of ambition. Emerson is earning more and more money and becoming a little bit more urbanized and civilized. Thoreau didn't like that. Emerson became critical as what he saw as Thoreau not going out and getting a permanent job, not doing a lot of writing and publication. So Ralph Waldo Emerson delivered the eulogy at Thoreau's funeral, and he does say there was no true American that existed than Thoreau. Now a little bit about the biography of Henry David Thoreau. He was born in Concord, Massachusetts on July 12, 1817. He went to Harvard College in 1833 and graduated in 1837, and he graduated with honors. And so afterwards, he opens up a school where he taught with his brother John, but he becomes quickly bored of that job, and in 1839, he made a trip on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers with his brother. After that, he becomes friends with uh, Emerson, and he helps edit The Dial, and he also tutors Emerson's children. Now, when 28 years of age, in March of 1845, we see Thoreau building his cabin and begins to work at Walden Pond. And on July 4th, he moves into the Walden cabin and begins to write. Shortly after he leaves Walden's cabin, in 1846, Thoreau is going to be arrested for the non-payment of the poll tax. Now, it takes almost 10 years for him to go through all of his different journals, and he publishes Walden on August 9th, 1856. Shortly after his publication, he also meets Walt Whitman in Brooklyn in 1856, and by 1860, he now starts contracting the cold that led to his fatal illness, and he dies in Concord on May 6, 1862. And because he wasn't really well known in his own time other than to the writers and publicators then, we don't really see much about Thoreau much more in the 19th century. However, in 1906, 20 volumes of Thoreau's writings about Walden were published, including 14 volumes of that journal. So now here we have Walden's Pond that he wrote about. Now we don't actually have the real cabin from Walden Pond. Emerson did have it taken down. And so this is a reproduction of the cabin where Thoreau lived for two years and two months. 
and we can see a modern reader of Thoreau in front of the historic cabin. Gives you a feel for just how small the cabin was. It was just enough for the one man, and that was it. And here is the nameless and timeless Henry David Thoreau. So a couple of the ideas we get from Thoreau's ideals is such as beauty originating from simplicity. We don't need to sit and ponder why birds fly or why the sun sets or why the waves keep washing in time and time again. You should just trust in its simplicity. Now, Thoreau's major works. Now, Walden is known for its modern style of the time, its simplicity of diction and figures of speech. And 200 different editions have been translated into every modern language. Walden was revised eight times and is read as the 19th century Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. Now, other major works include civil disobedience. Now, that's the result of Thoreau's being jailed and his experience in 1846, which embodies the pioneering spirit of the American frontiersman and a development of the philosophy in the Declaration of Independence. Now, civil disobedience is going to have a great impact on people such as Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, when we look at Thoreau and his sense of transcendentalism, he says, by working about six weeks in a year, I can meet all the expenses of living. He grows his own food. He builds his own shelter. And that gave Thoreau the freedom to work productively as a writer and a thinker. So with this, you see the transcendentalist ideals, this profound connection between self-reliance, between meaningful labor, and thought. Now, like the 1960s where Gandhi and King are going through their own civil rights movements, the 1840s saw a number of experiments with communes. Our another writer, Hawthorne, for example, lived for a time at Brook Farm, and other 19th century writers, the Alcotts, lived at the Fruitlands. Now, Thoreau's own stay at Walden Pond on Emerson's farm is a more solitary response to the same impulse towards social experimentation. But when we look at civil disobedience by Henry David Thoreau, he says, I say break the law. Let your life be a counter friction to stop the machine. So while living at Walden Pond, Thoreau was arrested and briefly jailed for not paying the poll tax of the town. Now his essay on the experience, Civil Disobedience, explores the question of what a person should do when he or she feels that his government is acting immorally. And lastly, like Ralph Waldo Emerson, Thoreau avidly studied the Hindu scriptures of India. What's interesting is that in the 20th century, an Indian, Mahatma Gandhi, then studies Thoreau's writings on civil disobedience as he leads India's struggle for independence. And another good American, Martin Luther King, based many of his ideas on nonviolent action on the work of Gandhi, who is therefore based on uh, Thoreau's writings. So lastly, as you can see in the American cultural tradition, what would have influenced Thoreau? Since he comes into the New World, he's going to have some Puritans from the Massachusetts state that he is from to give a bit of that sense of culture. And he also is looking at the sense of the American dream, self-reliance and transcendentalism. So when you look at him as a main character in his writings, he starts bringing up the sense of a new frontier. What can we do with what we have and how can we do it simply and thoughtfully? Thank you so much for stopping by for a short biography on Henry David Thoreau. If you'd like to learn more about Henry David Thoreau's books, such as Civil Disobedience or On Walden's Pond, please let me know in the comments below what it is you'd like to learn more of. And as always, I'd be happy if you subscribed.